Good morning. So, I have spent the morning cutting and hopefully correctly all the bearing wall material. First thing here is did I cut this the right length? Yep, looks good. Okay, so just laying out the studs here, crowning them all. crown them all one way. Okay, so we'll nail this header together. This uh, door goes into the mechanical room. So we'll make it all nice and flush. That should be ending somewhere right about there. Well, that worked. Eight and a half. Okay. And to the front. Too far. Don't move. Well, that worked. Okay, so this is the header for the bathroom door. Gotta go that way. Okay. A little bit too far. Yeah, eighth of an inch. Yeah, so I'm ready to start laying out. Oh, I gotta put these cripples in. I'm ready to start laying out for the floor. Okay, so the layout of the floor trusses starts at the back here. We're standing right here. It's one foot five and seven sixteenths to the edge of this one and away, all the way across. So, hook on the outside of the building. So 17 and a half is actually the number I use and away. Should be one truss somewhere here. Yep. Here he is. Uh, I'm gonna lay this out in case there's a bathroom or a toilet. Then I know now already that I have to change it when I install the header here. Okay, so now I'm hooking on here and I've got. 12 and 7 eighths to this line. So I hang my tape over here, 12 and 7 eighths, and make my mock. I can see my breath. <laughs> <laughs> 
That does not make sense. It's not that cold. That was weird. What was that about? <coughs> I better pay attention. This can get confusing if you mess this up. Anyways, that's this section. Where's my diamond? There it is. And this truss will in fact be in place. And this is why I don't run this for in five and a half. I always run this in five and a half because quite often you will have a truss sitting where this wall would go if you made it too long. Okay, so we'll come, hang it over four and a quarter. Four and a quarter, yep. Hang it over four and a quarter. Yep, okay. Punch in a two inch, and away I go again. Okay, so I hooked on here. Now I'm going to start laying out and I'm just going to go right on down this bearing wall. So split the difference here, two and three quarter. This is where my two trusses come together on this bearing wall. Here they come right to the edge because it's the stairwell. Look how lucky I got here. This floor truss is right beside this power mast. Got lucky. It's not the end of the world. I would just have to notch out the power mast. So the floor truss fits. Okay, so now we need to find the toilet. The toilet is here. So on that front corner, I come five foot seven and a half, outside to outside. I go, okay, so five foot seven and a half from the outside of the house to the outside of a two by six wall, and then the toilet. Seven and a half. Outside of the building. Okay, so get this set up here. side of a two by six plumbing wall so we need to check that and then so this is where the two by six wall is and there's no floor truss under the two by six wall and I can see now that we're clear of the uh, toilet flange if I come out 12 and a half that center on the flange give me two inches on either side and this is where the truss is we are perfect so no trusses need to be moved on this home on the main floor. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're moving into floor truss, getting the floor trusses. This home has what they call a threaded header. So these these uh, these three trusses, actually four, are a cantilever for a fireplace. 
So I have to start with this one because threading this beam in is complicated if the rest of your floor system's in. So this is the first part I'm going to start with. So I'm looking for MF10, two of them, and two MF9s. Okay, so what I've done is I took my telehandler, just unstacked some of these trusses. Uh, I'm just getting, I'm getting to the ones that have that threaded beam, but I do have to move a few yet just to get to it. So there's four MF6s. MF stands for main floor. There's four of them that I'm just going to move out of the way temporarily here. This is not where they belong, but this is where I'll need them. When I put them in place. So the one I'm looking for here is, well these two, they're MF9s. Uh, kind of the biggest ones. Uh, so that ends the cantilever. So I know with that, that all goes that way. And I just got to scoot around the open excavation. So this is fun. Not too bad for weight. Done worse. to get that ladder out of the way so now we will pass this on Double. It goes there. And this will go over here. Yeah, right there. One. I'll get the second one, and then there's two that are shorter. And I have to find those yet. Okay, I found my two MF10, so they're down low. Uh, so we'll move these MF5s. Let's find out where they go. Five. They are on that side of the sixes that I put there. Okay, okay so that's those guys. MF12. That is where back it's in the back okay grab him put it here drop it in and there's one more mf13 mf13 and it is in front of the one i just dropped in okay here it is just kind of stack them up against each other for now so that's MF8. Those are the ones I need for the edges of the cantilever. So they go way around to the far side. And thankfully, they're nice and light. Okay, here's the two uh, MF10s. Get this one out, hopefully. Let's see if I can tip this. Okay, I forgot to lay this out. So, this mark is 25 and an eighth and forward. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so these guys are all pretty close in place. I can get working now on this threaded beam. So Now we go cut the threaded header material. So it's labeled here beam 02. Beam 02 threaded is a seven foot by nine and a half. Here they are. So I'm not at all sure as to why that's seven foot. Gonna have to do some thinking here. Actually, I think I know why. Hold on. Okay, nail this beam together. Slip it in here. Gotta make sure the inspectors can see the nails. So this is what is called, you'd call the threaded part of this thingy. I'm slipping it in. Okay. Okay, so the beam's in there now. Uh, so now I think I'm gonna stop for lunch. And then I gotta add one of these and one over there and put a strong back in because these are fastened to the strong back. Okay, so I just put these two in place. Now I'll find uh, we'll put these two in place and then I think I can finish this threaded beam. It's really tricky how to put this all together in the right order. I don't even know if there is a right order. Okay, so I nailed this truss on the wrong side of the line, so remind me to fix that. As for now, we'll pull this across. So pretty soon it's going to start to gain weight on me here. It's getting a little bit heavy now. Okay. Apparently I pulled that too far because this isn't a cantilever. Oh. Dan! Ha! Okay, so I pulled it back up here. We're gonna do this. And stop it right there. Okay, so now we have these guys in place. So now I'm going to nail it to this exterior. Three nails. Okay, so that is all string lined sitting. I built that up with three plates. So this side's all solid. I do not have any of these fastened. But now I go over to my bearing wall here. And I gotta remember to move this one because it's in the wrong spot. But I can actually straighten and plumb my bearing wall with these trusses. And I can see now that this wall is being pushed, clearly. Uh, so it has to go this way. This is gonna be a little tough. Nope, not tough, quite easy. So I'll go 
wasn't too far. That's too far. That was fun. Okay. Where are we here? A little bit more in. Okay. So there. So now I'm on my mark. And by my mark, so I split this top plate in half, so it's two and three quarter of my lead line here, and this is right on the edge of it. So I can go ahead and nail these guys, and this bearing wall should be straight. Should be. <laughs> it is. Okay. Now, while I'm thinking of it, I am going to fix this mess. Fun. Now, back to this threaded cantilever thingy. Uh, so now I can use this here truss. Uh, straighten and hold that bearing wall so now I can put my 2x6 strong back in here and that is what those two are fastened to as well so let me get that a minute going here so before I put this strong back in I need to determine if it's on this side of the post or this side of the post and the way you do that a you can measure it or do this. Make these guys flush. And it's on the inside. Okay, now that has to be to the top. I am causing myself a little bit of grief with that running wild, but I will deal with that. It won't be that bad. So many things to watch for. Got to make sure these guys are on their layout and they're not nailed and there's a reason for that. I would like to nail them but I can't yet. Okay, that's going to be good. Now 
I can put the strong back in. Okay, so in this case it goes right to the top. Okay, so we have this here. I actually cut this thing a half inch too long. So I'm gonna bend this gang nail out of the way. Okay, so now it can actually just come a smidge too far. Okay, now side of this mess on here. Somewhere there, it's kind of guessing right now, slip it in. Okay, get the air nailer. Set this here at 16 and a half. Smidge out. Okay. Are these nailed? Nope. I should probably nail these. There it is. Okay, bring this in. Just leave that for now. Now we have to find hangers. Okay, so it's calling for six of these hangers and it doesn't need six um, because these are on bearing. I'll show you. So you can see this one here is on the bearing of the foundation. It's these guys here that are in the window that need the hanger. Okay, the reason you don't nail these is because these slip here. You have to pick this up and slide this doomahickey. Why is it so heavy? Oh, because it's strong back. And slide it in. Okay, that's one. The same for all these goofs. Lift it up. <coughs> oh, this is funky. This guy's gonna have to be slid over a little bit because this nailing flange. Has to slip through here. And we'll lift it up. Come on, come on. Okay, so it back with the gooseneck and now lifting it with the gooseneck and it should move. No, I see the problem. We're too tight here. There it goes. I promise you there's not a lot of fun with here with these guys. <clears throat> this needs to be thought out better. And Oh, 
come on. Okay, to finish these straps off, they wrap around. And then, hanger nails. Okay, so that's the uh, threaded beam. As far as the hangers are concerned, now comes this little goof, which is probably going to be a pain because there's not too many things that go awesome with these. I'm looking for my layout mark here. There it is. And in between here is, let's go, eight and five eighths. Okay. Leave that there. So now we go to here. Tap this in. To eight and five eighths. rather go a little more so that I'm not too wide I'm not too wide out here okay It's on the mark. Okay, that threaded beam's done. That's not fun. So now I'll get all the rest of the trusses brought over and slide them all into position. Nope, I got two headers to build yet. We'll do that first. All right, so here's the header. I got it nailed. So now we put the 15 inch block here. Call it a post, I guess. This is the squash block or the cripple. The bearing part. Now this. Has to go in. Now I have to turn the nails. Which reminds me, I don't think I did. I did that on the last one. So these nails got to go this way. So this is fastened. transfers beside the window onto the concrete. Oh yeah. Hang my tape over this post, 13 and 3 eighths. 13 and 3 eighths. Mark the black diamond or 19.2 and continue the end there so now this header's laid out okay I am now ready to hoof some trusses over hoot, hoot. okay so getting close to getting all the trusses on got this truss and then one to create 
the stairwell. Okay, and voila. So this last small truss from the outside is four foot half outside to outside. No, four foot five outside to outside. Okay, so four foot five outside to outside. So hooked on out there, four foot five. So here and back. And then four foot five. So we will 74 and a quarter off this mess. Okay, I gotta do math. Here we go. 74 and a quarter. Uh, that's okay. Slow down, Dad. 74 and a quarter, and four foot five is 53. So 53 quarter comes on down. Four minus three is one. 21 and a quarter. So from here, you suck gonna be 21 and a quarter. Carry that to the top from a square end. That's not looking very square. 24 and a quarter. Twenty-four and an eighth. Now if I'm out here, this makes things unsquare. Twenty-four and a quarter. I'm really uh, eleven and fifteen sixteenths. Eleven and fifteen sixteenths. I'll take that. Okay, where's my truss? Last great truss. Now we can push that. There it is. Air neighbor. Why is it way over there? Okay, so this is the end of the floor. Hoot hoot. A floor truss installation. Okay, so in the last video I mentioned the top plates are back an inch and a half. Now I'll show you exactly why. So this little guy, this is the what I call ribbon. Inch there, that's weird. What's going on here? Oh, time out. Time in. Okay, here we go. That bumps to there. I'll pull it off there just a smidge so it doesn't squeak. Now we'll plumb out, plumb up this exterior wall. Looks like it's going to come out a little like an eighth. Yep, right there. Okay, so this is why this is back an inch and a half to receive this ribbon. And I always cut these a little short so they fit. Okay, that's it for the day. Thank you for watching. You all take care. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.